In today's video we're going to be looking at the middle section of activity 3 in the unit 6 microcontrollers exam which is the hardware connections and it's quite a short section this but it's quite an important one to make sure we get done because it can lead to a lot of lost marks if we don't do it and for all it's not a hard and, there's no hard and fast way to complete this section if you follow the guides in here, then it'll give you some guidance as to how you should be completing it and how to get as many marks as you can. Like I say, it's part of activity three, which you can see the, uh, the requirements of here. And we're looking at the middle uh, bullet point, which is a description of the system design covering input and output devices and microcontroller connections. And we're doing this after we've done the first section where we're choosing the hardware to use. And it's kind of rolls in with it, but it's really important to make it nice and clear that you've done this separately to choosing which hardware you're going to use. And a quick overview of what the section entails. Like I say, it's a requirement of activity three. If we don't do this, if we miss this quite small section out, then it really limits the amount of marks you have access to. Because if you don't do anything for this, you can't get the higher marks for the other sections either. And that's going to really, really hold your marks back. It's 16 marks for activity three. And if you limit yourself to three or four marks, you're missing out on quite a huge, big chunk of uh, marks that you can get. And it's probably going to cost you a grade at the end of the day. So making sure we include this is vitally, vitally important. What you do is you give information of how you're setting up the hardware. So after you've chosen the hardware that you're going to use, you're given some information of how you're going to connect it up and why you connect it up in a certain way. And it's also a chance to give you a chance to show your knowledge of the hardware that you're going to use and the hardware that you're using and how it works. So you can include a bit of detail about um, the hardware when you're explaining how you're connecting it up and why that's happening. And I'll give a couple of examples in a moment of how we're going to do that. When looking at what to include in here, it's a bit difficult to go through in a format such as this it's going to be more difficult than some of the other sections that we've looked at but that's because it really depends on the hardware that you're using because different centers and different places will use different hardware you might be using Arduinos you might be using PIX you might be using something from Matrix and they all will be done in different ways one type of hardware you could use is something like the Arduino where you're going to connect each component up individually possibly by breadboard like on this diagram here and you'd include some kind of wiring diagram like you have here. So you kind of show how all of the connections are made and how you would connect the different individual components up with wires and things like that. And this is kind of the ideal situation that you can go into this detail. It does take a little bit of extra time and you probably don't have access to the internet while you're doing this. You shouldn't have access to the internet while you're doing this. So using internet based methods wouldn't really work. But if you can do this and put a little bit of an explanation of the diagram, then that would get, get you as many marks as you would need. A different type of hardware, you can see here it's something from Matrix. This is the BL0066 board with a couple of other boards plugged in. And here you don't have individual components connected separately. What you do have is some mini boards which you plug in together into certain ports. So there's a lot less information you can do here. You can't really put a wiring diagram up. So you could just do a description of the connections, to tell the reader, tell the examiner what you plug into each port and why you're going to plug that into those different ports. And you can't really do more than is mentioned here, unfortunately. Um, I think, you know, it would be ideal if you could put a bit more detail in, but because of the nature of the hardware, you're quite limited as to how you're going to explain how everything's connected up. To add a bit of context to what you're doing, uh, we can add some descriptions. So I've got a couple of examples here of little things you could write to uh, put a bit of detail into your work. First of all, you can say something like, I've connected the thermistor component to the analog input, as it will allow me to measure the temperature with more detail as a signal will be converted to a number by the ADC, ADC being the analog to digital converter. And just kind of saying why you've connected the uh, thermistor component into a particular um, connection on the hardware and just put, trying to put as much detail and showing that we understand how this stuff works. If you've got something like the second example that we had on the previous one uh, where you've got a number of ports you could say something like I've connected the keypad into port C as this component only uses pins 0 to 3 on the port 
and this port is missing pins six and seven because with this type of hardware, the different ports can sometimes act in different ways and that can lead us to preferring to use certain ports for certain components. Uh, in this case, you know, the keypad, it's an imaginary keypad, uh, it's not based on any real component, only uses certain uh, pins and those pins might be used for something else on that port, whereas uh, port A or B might have all eight pins working. Finally, in summary, uh, just looking at what we've just talked about, uh, if you miss this section, you miss a lot of marks and you, you cut a lot of marks out from the rest of activity three. And you know, 10 or more marks could be lost if you miss this out and it's quite easy to miss out. Plenty of people have forgotten to include this in the past. That said, it's quite a short section. It's really easy to do. And especially if you've got a second type of example where you're looking at ports, but even if you haven't to write a wiring diagram or, or draw out a wiring diagram, it's going to be quite a quick section to compare to some of the other sections that we do. And finally, you need to make sure that you're saying how the system connected and why you're connecting it in this way. You know, why are you um, going to be connecting certain components or certain ports? And when you do that, you can give some details how the hardware works. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you're enjoying these videos and you find them useful. If you are, it really does help us out if you subscribe to the channel and that helps you by keeping you up to date whenever we release a new video. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.